Today's gonna be all about UPNs, what they are and how we can map them to other things. We're gonna talk about a great feature that I'm really excited about. Hi, I'm Adam Saxon and welcome to Guy in a Cube, a channel dedicated to helping you and your company gain insights by learning and growing on the Microsoft Business Intelligence stack. And today we're gonna to talk about UPNs and a feature that came out about a week or two ago that I really love and this is gonna help a lot of people. So if you're using the Enterprise Gateway and you're using Analysis Services Live Connections as part of that, and you're struggling with some of the authentication pieces, this video is for you. So before we get into the feature, let's talk a little bit about UPNs. What is a UPN? A UPN stands for User Principal Name. Kind of looks like an email address, and this is really just a way to identify a user in your domain. It really, it's an attribute on an Active Directory account, and it's one of many attributes on that account. So this all starts when you sign into Power BI with your email address. And when you try to go use an AS Live connection that goes through an enterprise gateway, we pass that email address to the gateway. The gateway then uses that as the effective username on the AS connection. And when we connect to analysis services, we try and validate that against an account in Active Directory. We look up that UPN and match it to an attribute on an account in Active Directory. So if there's no match, your login fails. One of the struggles we had was the email address you signed in to Power BI with had to match the user principal name on an account in your local Active Directory. Not all environments handled it that way. And some companies didn't want to change the user principal name to match that email address. So enter in the new feature of map usernames, or what I call UPN mapping. So now when you go and create your data source for analysis services, when you go to the users tab of that data source in the Power BI service, you're gonna see a button there that says map usernames. When you click on that, an item is gonna slide out and you're gonna have some options to choose from. You can choose to replace a string value with another string value. If you've done any programming or worked with T-SQL at all, this is just like a string replace. So if you put in at contoso.com and I wanna say if the, if the email address that I sign into Power BI has at contoso.com, I want to replace that with at contoso.local. And so what that does is when we go, what we send to the enterprise gateway would be the, whatever your username is, at contoso.local. And that's going to match whatever the UPN is in your local Active Directory. You can do this for individual users as well. So if I had john at contoso.com, I can replace that with john at contoso.local. Something to be aware of is the fact that this is a string replace. So if I said I wanted to replace dan at contoso.com with dan at contoso.local, and you actually had an account that was a v-dan at contoso.com, that would now become v-dan at contoso.local when you didn't mean to actually change the v-dash login, you just wanted to change the regular dan. So be aware that this is an actual string of play, so you could be affecting multiple accounts without realizing it. You cannot use wildcards in these strings, so using like the star does not have any effect on it. It's gonna treat that as just a literal character. And there is no limit to what you can put into this list. Another thing to be aware of is that these mapping rules are specific to this data source only. So this is not a company-wide mapping. So if you end up creating two different data sources for analysis services and you want to use this UPN mapping, you have to do the same mapping in both data sources. The other thing that's cool about this feature is you can test the rules and see what it's going to come out with. So you can enter the email address that they would sign into Power BI with, click on test rule and it'll show you what the outcome of that is. That allows you to validate the entries that you've entered in. This is a great workaround for an issue I know a lot of people have struggled with. However, if you haven't set up any of the mapping rules, you're still gonna hit the login errors if your email address doesn't map to the user principal name in your local Active Directory. That still has to happen, there still is a domain requirement, but this allows you to really work past that and work around any limitations that there might be. All right, I wanna know if this is actually gonna help you and your organization. Leave that down in the comments below. Also feel free to leave any other comments or questions down there as well. Be sure to like and share this video with your friends. If this is your first time here, go ahead and subscribe. Every Tuesday, I look at a technical item such as this, where I either look at 
how something works, how to troubleshoot something, or just look at a new feature. And every Thursday, I take a look at the last week, find things that were interesting to me, and share that out with you. Really, this is about you. I wanna help you be more effective and successful in the things that you do. So go ahead and subscribe and be part of the conversation.